We will be recording the presentation this evening, uh, as we mentioned, so that we can share it with, uh, with families after the fact. Uh, but we're excited to present. We've got some students here. We've got some staff here. Uh, we've got a lot of great information and there will be time to ask questions at the end. Uh, so my name is Andrew Aginiga. I'm assistant principal at Seaside High School. And without further ado, uh, we're going to get rolling. So I'm going to pass it off to uh, Mr. Math himself, Mr. Amati from Marina High School. I am getting my alliteration of M's going this evening to start us off. Uh, yeah, thank, thanks, Andrew. Um, so yeah, I'm um, Jason Amati. I teach um, mathematics and computer science at Marina High School. Um, there is a good chance that your uh, ninth grade scholar, as we like to call them at Marina High School, um, has me for math, either me or Ms. Wilson. Um, I'm here to introduce the academic counselors first. Um, here, as you see projected on our screen is a list of the counselors' names. Um, these counselors are your friends, your guidance, your pathway to knowledge. They know everything that you need to know, anything that you either forget from this presentation or extra information that you want to know that you forgot to ask at the end of our presentation, these are the people to know. Um, if you're at Marina High School, um, you would be reaching out to Ms. Daly, who um, runs the ninth or 10th grade um, counseling. If you were at Monterey or Seaside High, you would um, reach out to the counselor based off of last name. So here are all the counselors. They're also college and career specialists um, at Marina and Monterey High School. Um, and see, sorry, Monterey and Seaside High School, but both of all the cons counselors um, do have the knowledge for college and career readiness. What other kind of information do they have? Well, how can the counselors help you? Um, they can help you with the graduation checks, um, college eligibility checks, any kind of personal issues that you might have. You know, you're, you're struggling. Maybe you're struggling with a particular teacher and you wanna have a set up a conference and you know, maybe your trust isn't there with the teacher. The counselor will help you set that up. The counselor will help you connect with the principal if you need to do that. Um, any kind of recommendations about which classes you should take. The counselor knows what you need to graduate. The counselor knows what you need to get into college. They can really help you with that information, building that pathway towards your success. When you need to register for either of the standardized tests, the SAT, the ACT, the counselor will help you with that. Um, they also have all the information needed for AP courses, which are sort of courses that you can take in high school that you can pass a test to get college credit, but also our dual enrollment courses, courses offered through the district at all the high schools where you can take simultaneous community college classes and get high school and college credits at the same time. They really are um, the best sources of information. And now I'm gonna pass it on to uh, Angelica. Okay, so hello everyone. My name's Angelica. I'm a student, I'm a junior at Marina High. I'm gonna be explaining A through D requirements. So all students have to complete the same high school requirements from grades nine through 12. Without completing them, a student can't graduate. They can't get a high school diploma. Now, high school requirements and college requirements are different. If a student only wanted to graduate, you know, get a GED, they would only meet the graduation requirements. But if that student also wanted to go to university, they would need both. So for graduation requirements, you need four courses of history, four long courses of English, um, four long, three long courses of math, and so forth and you need to have six electives throughout your high school career. Um, you need to pass the class with a D or higher. And for the college requirements, it's you know two, two years for history, four years of English, so forth, and a C or higher. Passing it down to Andrew. All right, so uh, as, as we'll get into a little bit more in depth, our high school graduation requirements are very much so aligned with what is called A through G requirements, uh, which are those co uh, college preparedness uh, requirements that Angelica referenced. So what you'll see on your student's transcript, uh, which you can uh, email counselors to provide unofficial transcripts, 
and they walk through these transcripts with students uh, when looking at courses, so on and so forth. So what you'll see on the transcripts is uh, the course code, uh, which uh, aligns with those different requirements like English, like science, so on and so forth. Uh, and the same with those abbreviations. Those are very much so uh, codes that are used uh, at the school level. But what's very, very important to recognize on here is the grade column and the credits column. As Angelica mentioned, a D grade or higher is passing. Therefore, a student will receive credit for that class. Important to recognize that this is credit towards graduation. Now, if a student receives a D, yes, that helps towards graduation, but it does not count for what is called the A to G requirements. So that is an important distinction to make that we'll go a little bit more in depth on. If a student does fail a course, if they do receive an F, um, they will need to retake those credits at a separate time. There are various course recovery, credit recovery mechanisms at our different school, uh, different schools, different sites, but that is something that counselors will work with students and families to help ensure that your student not only graduates, but has opportunities for after high school. So on this next slide, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth into the some key components. And the big thing you'll see there at the bottom. Uh, so there are the different uh, subject areas, the content areas of courses that students need requirements, uh, credit requirements for graduation. But that total number, every student in MPUSD needs 230 credits to graduate. Uh, that is for every student that is entering in the ninth and 10th grade. Uh, and that is something that counselors will help register students so that they do receive all 230 credits. It is important to recognize that um, right now you see a bunch of zeros for in progress schedule and need. Those numbers will change depending on what grade your student is in. So for example, a ninth grader uh, might see that they need to still have 30 credits or 35 credits of history, social science credits. They will take those over the course of their time in high school and we will uh, do our best uh, in terms of coursework and registration to help ensure that they graduate. Uh, one thing that is important to note is that those A to G requirements are not here specifically in saying uh, what kind of progress you're making. However, the counselor will work with you and your student to ensure that they, uh, if they are aiming to uh, go to a uh, college uh, after their time here in MPUSD, that's a great conversation that counselors will have with each one of your students. Uh, so, Getting a little bit more into what are those options after high school and the impacts of them, I'm going to pass it off to the queen of college and career at Seaside High School, Miss Doreen Gray, who is a wealth of knowledge. Thank you, Mr. Aguiniga. Um, so uh, I am Doreen Gray. I'm the college and career counselor at Seaside High School. Um, each of our high schools has someone in similar position to help your student uh, through this process. So they have a school counselor. Um, and then we also have the, the college and career counselor that, that works along with the school counselor to help your students. Um, so this next slide just kind of, kind of um, just illustrates the importance of, of um, a high school diploma as well as uh, furthering education. So it, it just gives us a little uh, graphic on how much more uh, a student or a person could make provided they, they continue on with their education. So a student that, that gains a, a bachelor's degree um, has a much higher uh, income uh, uh, possibility if they, if they continue with their education. So we just wanted this little slide just to show a little bit. Um, so a student who doesn't have a, um, a high school diploma has, has, a, has a earning capability much less than if, if they continue their education. On the next slide, um, we talk a little bit about the different um, educational systems here uh, in California. And so basically we have four types of uh, post-secondary 
uh, institutions. We, the first one on the right hand, far right uh, is our community colleges. So we have about 112 community college campuses in the state of California. Um, and MPC, Monterey Peninsula College is one, um, our local Hartnell, Cabrillo College and so forth. And so um, that just get, gives you an idea. Students can go into a community college right out of high school uh, as a possibility. We also have private universities. So Stanford and USC, University of Southern California are, some, are two of um, the, some popular ones, uh, but there's also Santa Clara University or Pepperdine um, to name a few. Uh, we also have um, the state uh, university system. So the University of California. Uh, is, is one we refer to as the UC system. There are nine uh, UC campuses, uh, including Berkeley and UCLA, uh, UC Santa Cruz. Um, and we also have the California State University or the CSU system, where there are 23 campuses. Uh, for us locally, CSU Monterey Bay is our local CSU, but students, we have students that go all over the state from uh, up north at Humboldt being the most Northern and uh, San Diego State as the, the most Southern um, CSU. So these are the, the typical, or these are the, the systems within California. Of course, there are a gazillion uh, other options outside of California and abroad, uh, but these are the ones that we, the A to G, who will, you will hear A to G from now all the way through senior year. Uh, a, the UC and the CSU systems require students to meet those A to G requirements. So A to G is basically just an alphabet, A, B, C, for, for the different subject areas. And um, um, so as you hear more about A to G, just realize that those are the requirements need necessary to get into a, a U University of California or the UC system. So to go a little bit more in depth, I'll hand it off to Sophia, one of our students here. Hello, my name is Sophia and I go to Marina High School and I'm a sophomore. And I'll be going more in depth about uh, CSUs and UCs. So um, CSUs basically have a minimum GPA of 2.5. That's just to get like registered in. And these, uh, what's it called? These GPAs from Cal Poly, San Diego, San Francisco, and San Jose, they're the averages of like the acceptance rate of um, the students that are applying for these colleges. A through G requirements are still applied like history, social science, English. Um, SAT and ACT require, they're not required anymore since of COVID. And for um, UCs, they're more, they're a high GP of 3.0, which is like a B average. And SATs and ACT, ACT scores are accepted, but because of COVID, you don't have to have them. Um, and for to get accepted, they have the UC personal insight questions, which are basically, they give you eight questions. You answer for about to like speak about yourself and what type of things you want to apply for. Okay, I'm gonna pass it back to Andrew. All right, so now that we are armed with information about our uh, what high school looks like and our goals for the future, let's talk about how we can help you right now. So uh, we certainly want to ensure, especially all of you, uh, many of you have ninth grade students currently or potentially incoming ninth grade students. We wanna help set you up for success now. That transition into high school is so challenging, especially in the COVID era where many of our ninth graders have never stepped on our high school campuses. We wanna ensure that you have that academic support. So at all of our high schools, teachers have office hours. Um, almost every single one of them have at least four days a week. Uh, and generally they're at two to three in the afternoon. However, uh, that is something that at our different sites, varies that you can find the links for those office hours in Google Classroom or Echo if you're at Seaside High School. 
We also have uh, what is called FEV Tutor, which is a one-on-one -on -one virtual tutoring opportunity, wide range of subjects, and students can schedule that on their own time. Uh, so even if it is outside of that office hour time period, maybe the best time to receive that tutoring supports at seven o'clock at night, they can actually schedule that appointment for the evening. Um, we also, at some of our schools, do have in-person cohorts currently. We are continuing with these cohorts uh, in a very safe manner, ensuring that protocols are followed um, that include a wellness check daily, temperature check, so on and so forth, uh, and tutoring opportunities. Some teachers are extremely passionate about one-on-one -on -one tutoring for students. Uh, and all of our teachers are really here to support our students. So whether it is contacting teachers directly to see how they can potentially help for classes or contacting counselors to find out more about some of those other tutoring opportunities, we certainly encourage our families to have that conversation with your student to see what academic support will best help them in their academic journey. Uh, so to talk a little bit more about some other things that will help you stand out for college and career opportunities, I'm going to pass it back to Sophia. Okay, so for extracurriculars, you can do like sports, clubs, this can be in or in, be in or outside of school since COVID and thing. There's usually virtual meetings like Active Random Kindness Club, NCBI Club, Heart Club, and all these. They're still doing drama club too. Um, band, you do virtual. You can also, like even if you haven't like done the instrument for like music opportunities, you could still do that. And as well as leadership. They give you, um, you can put this on your resume for college and they can see what your different types of interests are. And it's a good way to make friends and get to know other people. And I'll pass it back to Ms. Doreen. So we've talked a little bit about the, the different uh, college systems here in California and your grades um, and uh, getting into college. So the next thing is how are you gonna pay for it, right? So scholarships um, is, the, is one way. Um, all of, we ask all of our students and families to complete uh, what's called the uh, FAFSA or the California Dream application. FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And that is for students that have a, social, a valid social security number. Um, the California Dream Act um, is for students who do not have a, a, a social security number. But that is the first step to qualifying um, or, or seeing if you can receive need-based financial assistance for college. And there is aid for, for um, community college, private schools, vocational schools, um, as well as you know, the, the four-year universities. So we ask every student to senior to, to complete the FAFSA during their senior year. There's also scholarships. Um, so as Sophia was mentioning, there's things to get involved in. And um, uh, many scholarships do look at things like community service or your involvement in leadership, um, things like that, uh, that you may want to start thinking about becoming involved um, so that you do have something to reflect on in a scholarship application or an admissions, uh, a college application. Um, there are some, some things that students can do as a ninth grader um, that you can start uh, applying for. And we've noted a couple of um, potential scholarship searches, uh, fastweb.com and goingmary.com are two that are legitimate um, uh, scholarship searches um, that students can start as, as a ninth grader. Uh, and but there are also some local scholarships that students can be involved or apply to and usually the high school will have a scholarship list so on our Seaside High School website we have a, a link to a, a running scholarship list that we keep up. Um, I know that they do that as well at Marina and, and Monterey High School. Uh, but you can also check into your local church or your any civic organization that your parents are or, or unions that your parents are part of. Um, those can be also some scholarship um, areas. But 
it's very important that, you know, not only do you do, students need to do well in, in their high school classes, but also, you know, think about how they're going to pay for college as well. And so that's something that we will be communicating with students throughout their, their high school experience um, so that, that you all are thinking about it and that we can help you with this, this um, that process. So you don't have to do it alone. We have people who can help you. And Mr. Uh, Amani will do, will lead us off to those people who can help you. You're muted, Mr. Amani. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Uh, pay close attention to this page. This page really has all of the information. If you weren't listening at all, if you didn't hear what we we're saying, if you didn't absorb it, then this is the page for you. This is the contact information of all of the counselors. Each and every single one of these people have all of this information that we have given to you and so much more. You know, you're wondering about different clubs. You're wondering about what, what kind of uh, graduation requirements or A through G college requirements, email the counselor. You're wondering about scholarships and what kind of things either need-based or you know um, merit-based scholarships are available. Talk to your counselor, email your counselor. They love your questions. They want your questions. In fact, it is their job to answer your questions. Um, so all of these um, scholars uh, or um, counselors can really help you with these questions. Of course, as you see above, we have our phone numbers. You know, you, there's more than one way to contact our counselors. Um, if you're not comfortable with email, during work hours, you can call the school and on the school phone number, they will have menu options to direct you to talk to the counselor. So you can during school hours, during work hours, you can call the school and you know get transferred to the counselor and just speak to them directly, or of course, send them an email. So take a picture, screenshot it, write it down, whatever you need, this information is key. Uh, speaking of questions, we are now at the end of our presentation. And now we are going to be um, accepting questions. You know, um, all of us, um, students, uh, teachers, uh, principals, uh, and uh, counselors who are on this call are willing and able to answer your questions. Any questions that you have for us, um, one of us will be able to answer. Um, I want to, we can structure it multiple ways. You can either just, you know, after I'm so you can unmute yourself and you know you can ask your question and one of us will answer it. You can, if you're uncomfortable, you can send a message in the chat, either a public or a direct message, private message to one of our facilitators that you have heard, send us a message and we can read out without identifying you if that's more comfortable. So any questions, we would love to hear your questions. Uh, thank you for joining us on our presentation. Do you all have any questions for us tonight? You're welcome. It's a great question. I see in the chat is a foreign language required for college. If so, how many years? The answer is yes. Uh, so the graduation requirements for uh, high school um, have changed over the last few years. Um, and in, it is now um, two years uh, for our, our future uh, students for college for CSUs and UCs, they recommend three years of the same language. So important to recognize that, uh, for example, you cannot take Japanese freshman year and then take Spanish the next year and that count for that A to G requirement. So it does need to be the same language. Uh, Ms. Gray, am I uh, correct in that uh, assessment? I know you're the, the, the queen of requirements. Yeah, so it is two years of the same language uh, and it looks like for your, and starting 
it looks like we have an error in our our slide. It is two for high school graduation. In addition, it is also two years. Um, so our most of our high school graduation requirements align with the CSU UC or A to G requirements. Um, uh, but it is two years uh, for 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 both high school graduation and uh, the A to G. We highly recommend. So if you're looking at schools like UCLA, some higher end schools like UCLA or Berkeley, uh, Stanford, they are looking for beyond the minimum, though. So not just for foreign language, but for science and math and 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 other um, academic areas. Um, uh, you don't want to just do the minimum if you can. You want they want the high uh, the more the better for the um, for the higher end um, UCs and CSUs. We also have a question about the the FAFSA. So the FAFSA technically is for um, for nine for seniors to complete uh, in the fall of their senior year. Um, I'm not sure what our slide says, but uh, uh, the you can't those ninth graders can start to apply for different scholarships and look for scholarships. Um, if you'd like to, uh, if they'd like to. Um, so yes, so I apologize if we did it wrong. So the FAFSA is, is, is for seniors um, to complete and they do need parental information. Uh, we, again, we highly recommend all of our students to complete the either the FAFSA or the California Dream Act because I'd rather the college tell you, sorry, you know, this is what we can offer you, um, as opposed to you deciding on your own that you don't qualify for anything. Because there are some schools that offer um, uh, merit aid, not based on your financial need, but they do still require the, the financial aid application. Uh, so we do highly recommend students, seniors, to complete one of those financial aid applications. Um, I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll take the next question. Uh, next, there's the next question in the chat. Um, is a college diploma useful? Um, I just wanted to show this uh, slide right now, just to show. Um, this is statistics. This is this. This shows um, scanning um, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. So, stand, scanning this site, which is based off of everybody who's paying their taxes. Um, um, it shows that if you have less than a high school diploma, your medium earning your medium earnings will be $30,000 a year. Median is basically like the average of the United States, the middle income. If you just uh, if you just have a high school diploma, that bumps it up to an average of 38,000. If you took some college courses but didn't get your degree, that bumps it up to 43,000. If you get your associate degrees, which can be awarded after two years of community college, you can average of 46,000. And the big jump to bachelor jumps for just getting having a bachelor de degree. The average earnings for having a bachelor's degree is 64,000. And it goes up for a master's degree and professional and doctorate degree up from there. Okay. Um, so to answer your question, is a college diploma useful? Um, averages of the United States show that um, you will have a higher medium income potential with a higher degree. So we have some questions about foreign language again. Um, so technically you can start your foreign language um, uh, in your junior and senior year. That, that's totally possible. We prefer, as the, your school counselor would probably prefer that you start a little bit earlier so that ban, you know, in case something happens, then you know, at least you'll have, have met that requirement. Um, or if you need to, you, you have time to make up that requirement. Um, so if you can, I suggest starting at least by your sophomore year. And that way, if you, if you really like that language, maybe you can continue on to the third level by your junior year. Um, American Sign Language, uh, um, unfortunately, none of our schools are offering sign language now, but we do have students who do take um, the American Sign Language at uh, MPC as a 
dual enrollment student. So yes, that does count as a foreign language for high school graduation and most colleges also recognize it as a foreign language. But again, you need to take, if you take a, a community college class, you do need to take two semesters of, of that same language uh, to meet the requirement. Um, but uh, some of our high schools have French and Japanese, um, so that is great. But if you wanted to take um, a, a language that is offered at MPC, the, the benefit is that you do get gain college credit, provided you get a C or better in the class, as well as, as high school credit. Um, so, so just so you know. <laughs> Happy to take this uh, question here about the, I, I see somebody asking, can you go, please go back to the GPA for Cal States and UCs. So one important uh, thing that I, I believe Sophia shared, 2.5 GPA for CSUs is the minimum, um, which means that you have to have at least a 2.5. The GPAs that are showed on the screen uh, in terms of, Cal, for example, a 4.0 for Cal Poly, 3.55 for San Jose, uh, so on and so forth. Those represent averages of students that are accepted to those universities. Um, and so uh, do you need to have a 4.0 to apply to Cal Poly? No. However, will that help you get into that university in the major of your choice? Yes, it would certainly help. Uh, so these are more uh, averages that are that are guidelines rather than uh, requirements. The big requirements are 2.5 for CSUs and a 3.0 for UCs. As uh, Sophie also said, 3.0 is a B average. A 2.5 would mean an average uh, in between a B and C. Uh, so great questions that we are seeing in the chat. Uh, what other questions might we have? Any other questions or something that we you wouldn't want us to maybe expand upon further? Hello? Hi, we can hear you. Hi, great. I was wondering, do the students have to uh, volunteer to graduate? And if so, how many hours do they have to volunteer? So, um, Mr. Gina, I'm not sure about the Monterey High requirement with IB. But um, do you know? Yes. So as of right now, in, in terms of speaking for the other high schools, um, uh, I, I, I'd have to say it is not a requirement to graduate. Um, and, I, and I know that Monterey High has some specific requirements with its different academies and uh, programs with IB, so on and so forth. But I know Ms. Gray also has a little bit more insight about community service. Right. So. So for some of our um, teachers have that embedded in, have a community service um, uh, embedded in their curriculum. So they, that's part of their class. However, it's not a graduation, an all right graduation requirement. Uh, however, I highly recommend students to, as Sophia mentioned earlier, getting involved in, in um, their their high school and their community. Those are important things, not only for for um, uh, for a student's resume or their college applications, but also for themselves to be able to contribute back to their community. Um, and so we highly recommend that students become involved in some some respect, whether it be on a committee. Um, like some of our students that are here today are part of something that's making a change in our community. Um, but also, you know, it's um, a lot of colleges have that as a question. Do you volunteer or do you, what organizations are you a part of? And um, some of the, the um, more competitive um, uh, and impacted universities do look for students that are contributing back to their 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 local area and and they also look at things that um, a student could um, that's it, it's associated with something that they're interested in so let's say if they're interested in becoming a, a 
physical uh, um, physician's assistant or a, go into medicine, um, it, it helps for them to be doing something related to that. And, and it's not so much the, the amount, you know, they don't have to be in 40 different clubs, but if they're in the health club, you know, the health and um, the, our, the health club that we have at, at Seaside, and they also volunteer at, at CHOMP, you know, those two things alone and, and being involved over time is something that can be very helpful to their college applications uh, and for scholarships. By the way, CHOMP does offer a scholarship for the students who volunteer with them over, uh, uh, over time. So, um, so no, it's not a requirement, but it, it's, it, it really helps, I think, helping our students com um, connect with their community, their school, and, and get to know other people other than just you know, their, their little circle. Um, so I don't know, Sophia or Jason, if you have any other suggestions to, or additions to that? Um, yeah, I would just second the, the concept of, um, it is much better when we're thinking of community service um, for a college, uh, transcript for your resume. Um, it is much better to stick with one or two organizations committed for a long time than to spread yourself too thin and to um, go sprinkle yourself like 10 hours here, five hours here. It's much, um, uh, universities and colleges much prefer to see someone who is like committed to a certain cause or organization for a longer period of time. Uh, I see a question um, in the, the chat about um, ROTC. Sure, um, can I answer that one? Yeah. Okay. So um, as a person that was in GRTC for like a year or so, um, you can take GRTC for your physical um, education. And to be honest, it looks a lot better in your transcript too. And in some ways it could even boost your GPA. So, um, you know, you only need two years of PE, but for GRTC, you can also take it for four if you wanted to. Yeah, as a person that's part of JROTC, um, it also teaches you stuff about like taxes and about like government type stuff. And also can help you if you like, if you have this class, you don't essentially have to go to the military, you can just be in it for high school, but also gives you like um, opportunities if you want to join the military later in um, after high school. I'd also like to put a plug in for our JRTC programs. Um, it, there's also a, a great leadership um, um, training, I guess. Uh, um, you have a chance to really be a, become, learn some le leadership techniques and, and be able to, um, and it does look, I think, if you, if you choose to stay in it for four years, it, it can really show, um, you know, your commitment to something as well. Um, so a uh, little plug for, for uh, the JRTC programs. Uh, there was a question about the ACT, SAT. So currently, um, because of our current um, uh, distance learning situation, um, the SAT and ACTs are, have been, um, many schools, colleges have gone to be test optional. So it's not required um, for the college application. Uh, it, to be honest, it could come back for, for if you're a freshman, it could come back um, as part of the requirements by the time you become a senior. Uh, we just don't know, but uh, many colleges are, are finding different ways that, that um, um, different, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> uh, they, they're no longer requiring it, but have become test optional. So stay tuned to that requirement because it, it could change by the time you all are seniors. Um, but currently the UCs and CSUs and many private and out-of-state um, colleges are no longer requiring it. Um, but uh, um, yeah, so let's see, are there any other questions? Yep. Um, so there was a question about, do some courses um, that double enrollment, college level courses, um, how do they work and how do they benefit students? I can, I can answer that a little bit. So uh, dual enrollment, as we um, call it, is, is basically um, through um, your high school, through our councils, um, you register and sign up for community college classes at MPC. Um, so they, when we're thinking of your 
um, requirements, uh, whoops, going in the wrong direction, sorry. When you're thinking of your requirements, it, uh, it counts for your A through G and graduation requirements. So if you take a Spanish class at, at a community college, it counts for your graduation requirements of meaning two years long of community of uh, classes. But we call it dual enrollment because it also counts towards um, when you register for college and when you get accepted to the college, you come in with units. So just like in order to graduate high school, you need a certain amount of required units. To graduate from university, you also need a certain amount of required units. So by doing this dual enrollment program, you're almost like pre, you're almost starting to graduate from college already while you're still taking classes in high school. Um, and a lot of universities, especially the state universities, really like this because for them, that means, oh, if you're coming in with units, that means you could probably graduate faster and they can get more people in the door. Um, so it also shows that, you know, taking a college level class, which um, is usually more impactful and often more challenging and rigorous than a high school level course, it shows them that you're ready for college material. Ms. Guapa, I'm going to challenge Logan Paul to find a mystery box. Okay, um, we had a question about VAPA. So VAPA is uh, Visual and Performing Arts. Um, um, so that's like our, we have drawing and painting or digital media, um, uh, ceramics. Those are the courses that meet uh, the, the visual or band or theater that can meet the visual performing art requirement for both graduation and the, the A to G requirement. Um, the college prep elective, so um, college prep elective that you need one year for, um, that can be an additional course. So a student who takes an extra year of math, that could be the extra elective or an, a, a fourth year of science, that could be a, um, an elective. So it kind of drops down or you could take, um, some of our schools have psychology or sociology um, or um, what other classes do we have? I mean, we also offer auto tech, uh, our auto um, engineering. Those classes are all A to G that could fulfill the, the extra um, elective on the college side, as well as filling in for, for the one of the six um, extra elective classes. So I hope I'm asked, answering that question. Uh, and as far as back to community service, uh, the each school has their own process on recording community service. Um, so there is a way to have that entered currently onto the your high school transcript. Um, so please communicate with your counselor to um, if you if you want to, um, you know, add those community service hours to your to your students' um, trans you know, record. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. There's uh, a question about clubs. Maybe our, our, one of our um, students um, can talk about, answer this question. It says, uh, are, are there any clubs or activity that any of you may be familiar with um, where students or members are, are from different schools? Um, um, may, I know that you can, there are like private clubs. Um, um, I know some of my students are involved in like sports clubs, soccer clubs that there are more of a private thing, but um, scholars, do you know anything more about um, things like that? Um, I know that there's like certain, I know there was like a club rush type thing where there was, there was different options of like drama club, art club, acts of anime acts of random acts of kindness club and there's a bunch more that i know of but yeah i'm not in any of those clubs so. mm -hmm. um i would probably say key club oh, is really active because there's a lot of community service in there you can work with other schools and there's a ton of events you'd go to it's really beneficial especially if you want to get community service in your transcript They're, they offer a lot of it so I'm also happy to, uh, the, there are clubs, uh, for example, uh, there's one called Girls Inc. Uh, that's offered at many of our, 
our sites. Uh, so there, yes, there are a number of clubs. Uh, that would be a great thing to ask counselors about because they can help connect your student with those clubs. And a shameless plug for our uh, club here, the MPUSD Equity Task Force is uh, a combination of uh, students and staff from all of our schools. And we've worked with people from other districts and even the county. Uh, some of actually the students in here uh, and, and, and uh, Mr. Ahmadi also uh, presented to the Monterey County Office of Education. So presented to uh, students and staff from all kinds of other schools. So there are many opportunities um, of connecting with other schools and community service. So in terms of a list, um, you know, I can uh, speak for Seaside High School and saying that we uh, list a lot of that information on ECHO, which is our, our student learning management system. So students have access to uh, club lists. We have also had some club fairs. Um, I know at various schools, they have it on their school's website, uh, but again, a great opportunity to connect with counselors uh, so they can help share that information. There's also an activities director at every school uh, that helps to manage clubs. Um, and you can get that information through the counselor as well. I would also say as, as far as thinking of a list of community service um, examples or opportunity, um, I would actually start with um, your child's interests um, to see what kind of things that you're interested in, they, that they are interested in doing and what kind of, you know, either you know, activities or services that are interesting to them. Because especially if there's some, if it's something that they're gonna wanna commit to long-term, um, the more enjoyment they get from the act as well, um, the more they're gonna be able to get from it as well. So to, to also think of rather than just seeing a list of things to maybe think, what are you interested in? And then bring that idea to the counselors and they'll, or they'll help you find something. Thank you all for your questions. Um, we're still here, any other questions? You can unmute yourself. Um, you can uh, continue to ask questions in the chat. Um, we're still here for all of your uh, questions. See a lot of appreciation in the chat. And uh, I also have to throw a lot of uh, appreciation uh, first foremost to our students, uh, Sophia and Angelica from uh, Marina High School. Thank you all for your leadership tonight, Mr. Amadi, Mrs. Gray. Uh, you know, since we have nothing better to do on a Tuesday evening, but we do want to ensure families that you have this information. So uh, we'll hang out here for uh, about another couple minutes. Um, but uh, otherwise, we really appreciate uh, you attending this evening and hopefully you now have some more information to better support your student in their high school experience so that whether they are a Torador, Mariner, Spartan or otherwise uh, that they have plenty of opportunities during and after high school. Well, unless there's any other uh, questions or anything, uh, I guess, uh, uh, who wants to bring us home and say some great words to uh, send us home with? Um, I'll give it a shot. Um, we're really, um, we're really happy that you all, I just want to give a special shout out to the parents as well. Um, because we know that this has been a really hard time for all of our families. Um, distance learning has not been easy on anyone involved, um, for teachers, for students, for administration. And, and I think, you know, sometimes it's not always recognized. Um, the challenges that parents are also going through. So um, we, we know that there's um, a lot of stress going on in your um, in all of our lives right now. And we really wanna just thank you 
for you know caring enough about our schools, caring enough about all of this to come, listen to the information that we had to give you, ask your really amazing questions, and you know, and work with us in you know better providing the best experience that we can for for your high school experience. Um, it's been really great to to have you all here. We were we're so happy for such a great turnout of all of you coming, and we really wish you um, have the wonderful rest of your week and a great evening. So thanks for stopping by everybody. Um, so we will, um, will, the question is, will we have, will you have the link available after the recording? Um, I'm going to send it to the district, I suppose, and I would hope that they might provide it. Um, Andrew, any information about the recording? Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll pass it along to uh, the the district office, and then um, we will make sure that that gets shared out at our different schools, and so that families have access to this after tonight. Um, you should also know that um, if you look at all of these emails, there's basically a um, pattern. It's the first name, uh, first letter of the first name, and then the last name. So if you wanted to reach out to me. I would be Jay Amadi at all the MPUSDs. Uh, Andrew would be A Aginiga at all the MPUSDs. So if you wanted to reach out to us with any emails, um, it's 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 that name pattern as well. Yeah. So there, there's there's his in the chat, and I'll, I'll write mine as well. So if if something's happening and you're not able to get this information, you can um, reach out to all of us as well. I do want to mention um, also the when you're looking at the counselors, um, the, the 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 caseloads are based on the student's last name, and if they have two last names, it's their first last name. <laughs> so uh, it's a little complicated, but um, so if uh, if the student has two last names, it's based on their first last name. Mm. That is great information. All right. All right. Many other questions? Or comments? It doesn't have to just be questions. Well, shout out to uh, all of you for being here this evening. <laughs> Se quitó su penacho, huh? <laughs> Se quitó el penacho. Nice to see you. Yeah. Bye. Gracias. Que tengo la. Buenas noches. Why is the camera? Why? Nos vemos. All right.